Hello everyone and welcome to ProRPA.com. Hope you guys are enjoying learning all the exercises and the theory with the fundamental concepts of UiPath, one of the most sophisticated softwares available for robotics process automations. For this week, uh, we'll be talking about a few Excel activities. So Excel is one of the most crucial applications that we use in um, literally, uh, literally like every every work that we do. Like, you know, um, in, in most sophisticated enterprise applications such as Oracle or SAP, the reporting is done uh, in Excel format so that it becomes easier to comprehend and for further analysis and stuff. If you have to create a quick dashboards with charts and uh, graphs and stuff, you and pivot tables, of course, you would want to use Excel. Then Excel, uh, I have seen in, um, in, in a lot of project management stuff, to see uh, you know the timeline to see how, uh, how all the resources are doing which all would need to be allocated or released all other um, you know um, tr keeping track of um, let's say vacations or calendars or or invites or meetings a lot of stuff is done on Excel right I'm sure um, in 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 almost your daily jobs you would want to use Excel in some or the other way you will be using it so um, in RPA projects as well, it is one of the applications that has extensively been used and uh, automated. So uh, I'm sure these activities are going to come handy in, in those aspects. All right. So for this week use case, I have mentioned the use case in um, the blog post itself. If not, I would ask you to uh, not continue with this video right now. Go through it, um, the use case on the blog post at prorpa.com. Check it out, try to solve it by yourself, and then uh, possibly say, um, look at the look at one of the ideal solutions that I'm providing here. And uh, if you have already finished it, let's uh, compare it, right? I'm sure there could be better ways, there could be more optimized and efficient ways, but uh, this one is pretty decent as well. So, okay, let's get started. Um, first and foremost, what you would want to do in uh, any any program as I have talked about this before as well is that you would want to create an algorithm so for this um, particular issue for this particular use case that we have the question is that you have to read five input files and you have to consolidate their data right so um, the first step that you're gonna do is you're gonna get to the directory where input files are located right and from that directory, you're going to get all the file names and store them in an array. Why would you want to do that? So that you could retrieve them one by one, right? F to know more about arrays, um, check out my previous blog post. I have talked about the, about the most elemental and basic um, um, data structures that we use within UiPath. And um, in, in the third step, we are going to you know, sort all these file names that we got in step two to make them read logically. Okay, so in, in you know any corporate world, you want to make your work as presentable as possible. And this step is pretty much doing that. In my example, I'm taking five input files which are here, right? And um, they're starting with the 0, 01, 0, 02, the file number itself, right? And if I'm going to read them logically, you, you would want to do them in ascending or in descending order. You wouldn't want your bot to read, let's say, file 03 first and then 0, 01, then 0, 05, then 0, 02, and 0, 04. You wouldn't want to read it randomly. You would want to read it logically. So that's why the input file names that I have within the um, within my array, which I got in step number two, I sorted them, right? Now, um, in fourth step, I'm opening the output file, um, and uh, I'm going to keep it handy. So let me first show you how my input file looks so that you know it makes it more clear that you know actually this is something which we have used at our client end but um, the data has been changed completely so uh, this is all the data that we have for each and every file it's different a little bit of difference is there and this is the output file that I need to put the data in now um, uh, okay so I have a few headers or you know stuff and uh, I'm gonna put the data in here right so the thing is, um, why would I um, want to keep it handy? I'm not sure, but 
possibly a few of you guys who have tried this exercise might have been um, doing one thing that you know you're reading the input file um, the data into it from it and uh, putting that data into output file and closing both of the files you need to close only the input file and you can keep the output file open because you don't want to open and close it again and again despite the fact that you know that you're gonna write data again and again on that file right so just open it keep it handy once all the processing is done close it that's how you would do even manually this work right you wouldn't open and close it again and again this is for five files so it's still doable if it is for 500 files you know 500 input files you wouldn't want to open and close um, output file 500 times that would be like an extra step right so this is more from from the efficiency standpoint and uh, once you have the output file open you're gonna start a loop which is gonna go till uh, the number of input files because that's how long you want to iterate into the loop and uh, there you would also start off with the counter variable too now this counter variable what it's gonna do is it's gonna tell you which row number to write in the output file right so in in my scenario um, I have defaulted the counter variable with uh, value of 2 because I want to start from the second row of the output file. The first row is the header row, so I wouldn't want to override on this one, but rather I would want to start from here and then keep continuing, right, based on the next input file, which is iterated in the loop itself. Right, so um, within the loop, I'm going to read the input file, which is in hand based on, uh, you know, the iteration of that loop, number of iteration of that loop. Then I'm going to insert the data into the second row of that input file because uh, I've read the data. Now I'm going to read, um, I'm going to write that data. I'm going to close the input file. And once all the fields are like, you know, correctly written and everything, I'm going to increment the counter uh, with one value. Why? Because I next time I would want to start with the third row rather than with the default value of second row. And then I'm going to end the loop. Once all the files are written and consolidated into the single file, which is the output file, I'm going to close that file. Fairly simple algorithm, right? Okay, let's try and implementing this. Um, so this is the program that I did in the first step. Um, I am uh, creating a variable called file list. This file list variable is of uh, string array type. And what it's going to do is it's going to use a predefined .NET function, which is called directory.getfiles. And uh, here's the location, as you can see in this bubble. There's, here's the location that, I'm, uh, uh, that I've put all my input files in. And uh, what this is also going to do is it's going to use um, a wildcard um, called asterisk. And uh, what it's going to do is all the Excel files would be read at this particular location. Um, and their names would be stored in this uh, array variable file list, right? So you can use these wildcards again to uh, make your program more robust, more um, easy. And um, I have talked, I have given the hint on um, on these uh, wildcards in my blog post as well. So please do check that out. And uh, once you've got all the file names, you're sorting the file names. So to sort those, um, you're using a function, and uh, there's this uh, activity called um, invoke, invoke method, right? And um, using this activity, what you're gonna do is you're gonna set a target type. The target type is gonna be an array because you're gonna sort the data, and you're you're still gonna get the array, right? That's what you want, right? And uh, the method name again is a predefined method okay, available, which is called sort method. That way, it becomes easier to um, you know use these functions and get the data in your desired way and also um, you have to set the parameters for this function this the input parameter is the file list which is also the output parameter as well and it is of type array so that's what you're using as the parameters and uh, automatically the sorted array would be stored in the file list um, string array variable itself right this is a pretty new thing um, you'll get to learn um, you know how to use these uh, predefined functions as you play around with the tool that's why I always ask you to create your own use cases and, and start automating them 
right? And then once the file names have been sorted, you, this is the sequence of activities that you would want to go with. First, you're going to open the output file, keep it handy. That's what the algorithm says. So this is the location which is, it is pointing to. I've hard coded this one because my output file is going to remain the same, right? And uh, once this is open, then uh, I'm going to start off with the loop to, uh, you know, loop through each file. And uh, we have used the for each loop uh, in our previous blog post as well. So if you haven't checked it out, please do. And um, for each um, item in the file list uh, string variable, this is the sequence of steps that we're going to do. We are going to first read the input file. So to read the input file, the item, uh, which is like the variable that we um, used as the iterator for uh, this while loop, to uh, you know to to traverse through this uh, file name list this file list has um, actually the directory information the complete location along with the file name and the extension in it so each and every entry within this array is going to point us to the correct direction um, of the file right so everything is there the first item has been uh, taken in the first iteration of the loop and uh, we are going to use this in the input file application scope, the Excel application scope, as item dot two string, because we need to convert that data into two string. Um, um, that's why we are using this function, right? Otherwise, item um, is of generic type. So in most of the functions, any parameters that you would want to use, you have to convert them into string so that it becomes readable for that activity. Once you read that, here's the sequence of activities you want to do. There's the um, worksheet name. I'll show you. It could have been again different based on what input files you guys have taken. But in my case, this is the worksheet name, control design assessment. Because I'm hard coding this one, that's why I have put this in double quotes. Right? If it was in any variable or something, I would have used the two string method. And um, here's that data available, right? It's in C6. That's the location. So let me open the input file again. This is the C6, and uh, <clears throat> this is going to have control owner data, right? So I have also named this as read control owner, and the output for this activity is going to be stored in a string variable called control owner. There it is. So I created all these variables, and I stored um, the data, the relevant data, from the read activities accordingly, right? That's how I got all the data, let's say, prepared by, reviewed by data, and um, and all this other Excel activities. So the activity is actually called read cell because we are reading each cell instead of, you know, the whole Excel sheet or, or a particular range. Why? Because we want only specific fields, right? So um, we have read the data and uh, we have pinpointed the locations and the worksheet name. Next, once we have read the data, we're going to write that data. So the application scope is already open because the way we've kept the file open and handy. So um, we're going to use instead of read cell, very simple activity called write cell within the Excel one, right? Not this, but you would want to use the Excel one. So um, you're going to use the write cell. Here is the worksheet name. Here is um, the location. So for the location one, again, you want to use the counter because uh, you're going to increment it uh, every time the iteration um, restarts, right? So this is the um, this is the hard coded one because in the first column itself you would want to write this, and in the second column the next variable, and um, the second part of the location. Let me show you, like you know, you, the first you want to start with here, which is a two. So a and uh, a is gonna always be the same in all these cases, but two three four is gonna be uh, something which will be told to the bot by the counter variable, right? So you're going to write it like this. You're going to concatenate these using the plus sign. So a plus counter dot two string because counter is an integer variable. You need to convert it into string to make it readable. And um, the value of this particular activity would be stored in control owner, which we um, assigned as the output in the previous read activities sequence, right? So that's how we're going to write all the data in here. And this is um, fairly simple, a little lengthy, but only one-time effort. 
and once all the written part is done you would want to increment your counter variable so that next time when it again comes and reads and writes you are especially in the write itself uh, because that's what the counter is used for then you would want to start from the next line of the output file okay uh, fairly simple um, let's check this out right so here is the whole program let me condense it a little bit okay so these are the activities we have used what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close my input and output files so that it becomes easier for us to see how the program runs and uh, as you can see let's run this so the UI path is starting mm -hmm. here's the output file which has been opened and kept handy first file read and written already right now second file opened started already written all the data third file perfect fourth file the file is uh, the output file is open right you don't want to open and close it again and again so you can see all the data has been done and damn fast you can see how how efficient it was I'm sure if you would have done this manually it would have taken you at least five to ten minutes easy because you would want to copy the specific field and uh, put it in the clipboard then paste it in the output file then again look for uh, the second uh, you know field um, that you want to copy and again back and forth actions which has been done by the bot in literally seconds so uh, the efficiency you can see is tremendous and let's say if you had to do it for 500 or a thousand files I'm sure the bot would do it in um, a matter of minutes versus you doing this uh, in a week or so. So um, this is the program for this week. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, please do share this and uh, provide your comments, your feedback, your questions that you may have. You know, any any other um, optimization techniques, I would be more than happy to, you know, discuss these. And uh, um, and please do share, subscribe, and like to the blog post, to my YouTube channel with the same name, Pro RPA, and um, you know, um, just you know, I have a Facebook page on Pro RPA as well, so please do like that. I do post con uh, content on a weekly basis, so would highly appreciate if you know you guys could provide um, you know your valuable programs. If you have, uh, if you're stuck anywhere, then feel free to ask and um, hope we are making this learning process easy and efficient for you guys all right um, stay tuned for next week uh, blog post and um, thank you very much happy automating goodbye